Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. It's the first real clear uh, demonstration and study of the T cells uh, against uh, SARS-CoV-2. There is new evidence that a coronavirus vaccine is possible. It is based on new study from the La Jolla Institute of Immunology. Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And 10 News reporter Anthony Perez spoke with researchers about how their findings will provide a benchmark for vaccine development. Researchers studied what was happening at a cellular level to people that had recovered from the coronavirus. Their focus was on how the immune system fights the infection. Inside the La Jolla Institute for Immunology, researchers have been working to answer a pressing question in the fight against coronavirus. There is a lot of concern that the immunity from the coronavirus may not be very good and may fade quickly. Dr. Alessandro Sete and his team set out to get answers. Using blood samples of 20 people that had recovered from COVID-19, the research focused on so-called T-cells. The type of cells that uh, seek out and kill the infected cells, so they're really uh, the cornerstone of immune response. They wanted to know if the T cells of someone that's recovered from COVID-19 could recognize the virus and respond. We were able to ask the question, can we see T cell responses? And we do. We see very uh, nice, uh, strong, robust immune responses. Their data provides a snapshot of what a successful immune response looks like and what those looking to create a vaccine will want to replicate. It's the first real clear uh, demonstration. The team also studied blood samples collected from people before the pandemic and found something surprising. Though the donors were never exposed to the virus, their T cells reacted in some capacity. Sete says it could be because most people have encountered some of the more common cold coronavirus and built some level of pre-existing immunity. It may explain why COVID-19 affects each person very differently. Could it be that there is, a, in some people, a pre-existing uh, immune response that maybe is not sufficient to fight off the virus, but gives you an edge? The results of the study will be shared with other researchers around the world. Anthony Pura, 10 News. The USNS Mercy will make its way back home to San Diego tomorrow after being in L.A. to help with the pandemic. The ship left San Diego in March. And 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us its mission in L.A. to treat non-COVID related patients. For nearly two months, the USNS Mercy was docked in Los Angeles, departing San Diego on March 23rd. With over 800 staff on board, the ship was sent north to help healthcare officials deal with rising cases of COVID-19 and fears of overwhelming the healthcare system. The ship was used to treat non-COVID-19 patients to help free up beds at local hospitals. Personnel on board had the ability to perform surgeries, treating things such as heart attacks, strokes, or even car accident victims. While in Los Angeles, seven crew members did test positive for coronavirus and had to be moved off the ship to quarantine and recover. More than 100 others had to be moved off the Mercy to quarantine because of potential contact with a positive COVID patient. Some medical personnel will stay behind on Friday when the ship departs, including 40 medical staffers and six medical support teams. In a statement, the ship's commanding officer saying medical professionals on board Mercy are proud and humbled to have assisted. The ship will leave Los Angeles around 7 Friday morning and is expected to arrive in San Diego during the late afternoon. Laura Acevedo, 10 News. Five sailors who returned to the USS Theodore Roosevelt aircraft carrier have retested positive for coronavirus. An outbreak aboard the San Diego-based carrier was reported in March. The Navy evacuated about 4,000 sailors to Guam. They were allowed to return to the ship after a period of quarantine. The new cases came about after one sailor started experiencing symptoms. The COVID-19 death toll now tops 300,000 worldwide, with the highest number here in the U.S. were more than 85,000. 
And as ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports, the Food and Drug Administration is sharing findings about a test used across the country, including at the White House, to diagnose the virus within minutes. A new alert from the FDA raising questions about the accuracy of one popular test used to diagnose COVID-19. The agency saying the Abbott ID now point of care test believed to be the same kind given to White House staff and visitors before they interact with the president may return false negatives. The FDA noting that the studies have limitations and the tests which are being researched further can still be used and can correctly identify many positive cases in minutes. With COVID-19 cases still on the rise in some areas, at least 45 states have now eased restrictions, with three more states following suit on Friday. In hard-hit New Jersey, some beaches and boardwalks reopening this weekend. And in Wisconsin, some bars and restaurants are packed after the state's Supreme Court struck down the governor's stay-at-home order. If they don't feel that it's good to come out yet, more to them. But I hope they respect my feelings on I would like to come out and I would like to start getting the economy going again. The CDC now out with new guidelines with specific guidance on reopening safely, saying restaurants should encourage social distancing and offer flexible leave for employees. Also recommending that schools and camps that reopen should stagger drop offs and limit how often kids are together in groups. But in Washington state, some hairdressers petitioning to delay reopening out of concerns for their safety as some experts continue sounding the alarm about the virus's spread. Dr. Rick Bright, who says he was forced out of his role leading the government's search for a vaccine, testifying before Congress as a whistleblower. Without better planning, 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. We still do not have a standard, centralized, coordinated plan to take our nation through this response. Time is running out because the virus is still spreading everywhere. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Los Angeles. Governor Newsom is laying out his plan to deal with the state's massive budget deficit. The state's deficit is currently sitting around $54 billion. The governor said there will be major cuts coming, but the goal is to avoid slashes to education, health and safety. Luckily, the state put away $16 billion in a rainy day fund for emergency use. That money will be used over the next three years to bring down this deficit. The governor is also pleading with President Trump and Congress to pass the next stimulus, which would provide much needed federal funding to states. The budget must be voted on and passed by state lawmakers no later than June 15th. And the county is changing its tone about San Diego's casinos reopening next week. Yesterday, Dr. Wooten vowed to work with the CDC to keep casinos closed. But today, county officials took a different stance. Tribal nations are, have sovereign authority. So our plan is to review, our strategy is to review those plans with them and provide guidance and advice uh, where possible. Legal experts tell 10 News state and local governments have no jurisdiction over tribal lands. They don't have the authority to stop any tribal gaming facility from reopening. San Diego casinos have outlined sanitation and social distancing protocols. They have those in place when they begin a phased reopening next week. Here now are the latest local numbers. The county reported 113 new coronavirus cases today, bringing our total to just under 5,400. There were also six new deaths, bringing our total to an even 200. 3,300 people have recovered. Just in time for the weekend, late today, San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner announced new reopenings at our lakes and reservoirs beginning tomorrow. Lake Murray Reservoir and Lake Miramar Reservoir open for public access, including walking, jogging, bike riding, fishing, and boating. Uh, the following will be opening on Saturday, May 16th. That will be the Lower Otai Lake Reservoir. That will be open for public access, including walking, jogging, biking, fishing, and boating as well. Uh, per the county rules, parking lots at these three facilities will be open at 50% capacity. 
The mayor says the bathrooms will be cleaned every two hours. Requirements for facial coverings and social distancing will be monitored. El Capitan, Otay and San Vicente reservoirs are still closed, but the mayor promised an update on those next week. A 10-year-old girl is recovering tonight after nearly drowning at a beach in La Jolla. Surfers pulled her from the water today north of Scripps Pier. They started CPR while someone called lifeguards. She was breathing when they arrived. The girl who was with her father was taken to Rady Children's Hospital. No word tonight on her condition. Fire crews knocked down a boat fire on Shelter Island tonight. This happened about 7 o'clock at a marina in the 2400 block of Shelter Island Drive. Crews had it out by the time we arrived. They said that the boat looked like it was under construction. No word on the cause and no one was injured. Police are investigating a shooting that happened outside a liquor store in Webster. It happened this evening at the corner of 47th and Federal. Witnesses say there were two men fighting. One of them was stabbed. Witnesses then say the victim pulled out a gun and started shooting. Police found no suspects or victims.